The Aztec is the go-to example of automotive design disasters, the butt of every car joke, and a tragic commercial failure. But I think it was the perfect car, 20 years too early. In 1999, Pontiac were making volume cars. They were on the low end of GM's multi-brand empire. They were the sporty brand, slotted below the more luxurious Buick and Oldsmobile. They were pumping out cars like the Bonneville, Firebird, Grand Am, Grand Prix, and the Sunfire. So of all the brands under GM's lineup, this was the one to try something different. That same year, Pontiac released a concept car that propelled them into the year 2020. The only problem was, the rest of the world was still in 1999. The Aztec concept was designed under the direction of Tom Peters. Before you say anything, it's the same Tom that did this. Clearly he knows how to pen a car. When the Aztec concept dropped, it was well received. It was edgy aggressive, a head turner. From all accounts and purposes, first impressions were good. But here's the thing. There are three types of concept cars. There are concept cars that are basically production cars with smaller panel gaps and tires that fill the well. Then there are concept cars that give the public a glimpse of things to come, and then they're often toned down for production. Finally, there are concept cars that give designers free reign. Seems like a stress relief for them. But the truth is, they'll never see the light of day. No matter how much we love them. Pontiac did the second one. And in reality, it's the hardest one to pull off. These concepts are usually exaggerated in the best ways. And by the time they find a design that works for production, the car has been watered down into oblivion. See, in cases where the concept gives the public an idea for the car, it's important to listen to the feedback and understand what works and what doesn't. Think Bentley Bentayga. Even though truthfully, I kind of like the concept better. In 2000, it came to dealers looking like this. The battle was fought, and the battle was lost. The annual sales forecast was 75,000 units. But the Aztec never sold over 30,000 and neglected to even break even for the company. The truth is, even though I agree the Aztec was all types of wrong, it was also all types of right. 20 years too early. Remember back when we all agreed what a coupe was? Basically, the two door version of a sedan, or just a two door car in general. It was easy. But then Mercedes dropped the CLS. And while there is some debate on whether it's the first four-door coupe or not, it was definitely the beginning of an era that changed the conversation around coupes. And soon enough, we had it. The X6. The four-door SUV coupe. Seven years before the X6 entered production, the Aztec looked like this. See, Pontiac knew that a sloping roofline would compromise interior space but it would also give it an athletic silhouette to the back half of the Aztec. 20 years later, we have the Cayenne, X6, GLE, Q8, Atlas, and soon the revival of another SUV coupe that was poorly executed. While we're talking about BMW, it's clear that the 2020s will be the year of the split headlights. Not only Beamer, but Audi, Jeep, Chevy, Hyundai, even Kia, they've all jumped onto the trend. And here's the Aztec, split lights and all. You know, according to Wikipedia, journalist Dan Neal said that the Aztec violated one of the principal rules of car design. We like cars that look like us. He said with its multiple eyes and supernumerary nostrils, the Aztec looked deformed and scary something that dogs bark at and cathedrals employ to ring bells. Someone needs to tell Dan that the future is scarier than he could imagine. Yes, even the oversized grill was on display at the Pontiac dealership. 
years before big grills were all the rage. But Pontiac's ability to future-proof the Aztec wasn't only in styling cues. Its tech and practicality holds up just as well. Listen to this list of features. An optional heads-up display. The ability to carry a 4x8 sheet of plywood. A pull-out cargo tray that could hold up to 400 pounds. Or a cargo net system that could hold up to 200 pounds. A center console that doubled as a removable cooler. An inflatable mattress or a tent. A built-in air compressor. It even had an optional 10-speaker stereo system that had a set of controls at the back of the car. This allowed you to tailgate with a two-piece tailgate system that had built-in cup holders and contoured seating just for your extra comfort. This was a list to make Rivian sweat. It's a shame because the looks of the Aztec have overshadowed an otherwise inspiring and ambitious project. The Aztec makes me think a lot about BMW's all-new XM. In many ways, I see the same ideas here, but instead of the budget-friendly adventure vehicle, BMW is touting the XM as what may be the first Halo SUV, a luxury for a select few. And as if the fortuity wasn't already enough, Pontiac was a brand that also wore a twin kidney grill. There's a case to be made that if Pontiac were around today, the Aztec might look something like this. An idea truly ahead of its time. See, the Aztec was like cooking a meal with all the perfect ingredients, but in all the wrong ways. Too much pepper, not enough salt. Whisk when you should have stirred, boiled when you should roast. And just like a poorly assembled meal, it's understandable why the expectation was high and the disappointment was real. Me personally, I've never been a Pontiac guy save for the Grand Prix, but it hurts to know how close they got and what that could have meant for the brand today. We can only look back at this as a reminder of the dangers that come from concept car mismanagement. This was a car that could have and should have saved Pontiac. Sure, it wasn't beautiful traditionally, but the ideology was truly unique, truly masterful. If nothing else, the Aztec is a cautionary tale that sometimes you can make the right car at the wrong time.